Hello and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling Brit Entertainment, the only audio experience on YouTube, Castbox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play More Coffee. I am, of course, your host, James J, alongside Coleco Yachts, who may be joining us, hopefully will be joining us in a little bit. Um, but who is with us right now? Uh, Scoot Dust. Uh, what, what, what the past couple of days it has been. And, uh, before we get into everything, um, I'd like to thank, uh, Rumblejack Larry Woods and, uh, Harry McDonald for, um, our interviews on Tuesday and Wednesday, incredible interviews, incredible human being. I highly recommend those interviews for anybody that wants to go into our archives and check them out. Um, this upcoming Tuesday, we have Layla James, and on uh, Wednesday, we have Perry's um, tag team partner, Ryan Curran, on the show. Um, definitely go check those out, and um, you could go onto our Twitter X page for some clips of those interviews um, in the following days. Alright, um, it was not a great couple of days for pro wrestling. It was honestly one of the worst, I would honestly say, um, as we lost two incredible performers in our industry. Um, we lost Terry Funk on Wednesday, and we lost Gray Wyatt on Thursday. And to, I mean, Terry is a legend of this business. Bray was in coming up into that category. And it's just, the Bray hurts a little bit more because he was so young. And um, we're starting the first half or so with some... Um, with some Terry Funk, we're going to talk about um, the life and um, legacy of Terry Funk. Um, Terry Funk was born June 30th, 1944, and he was the brother of Dory Funk Jr. and the, the son of Dory Funk, um, second generation wrestler. Began his wrestling career in 1965 and he only stopped wrestling in 2017 amazingly isn't that a crazy scooter it's it's absolutely uh absolutely i mean you know some there, there are a couple of people in the business, and I don't, I don't say this with any malice whatsoever. That that they love the business so much, they want. It's almost as if they want to go out in. Hey, go out in a in a blaze of glory. What the hell? Is that? He um he had a stint in all Japan pro wrestling from nineteen seventy two to nineteen ninety one. Um, he competed in Continental Wrestling Association. Uh, feuding with Jerry Lawler. He the empty had, arena match. Yeah. That was the first Terry Funk match I ever saw. He competed for the uh, WWF uh, in 1985, even competing at WrestleMania 2. Um, he even had, um, maybe this is a known fact, maybe it isn't, he had a series of title matches against Paul Hogan. Yep. And... In fact, uh, some would say 
Terry Funk is one of the reasons Hogan got into wrestling in the first place. Was it? Yeah. Um, what was Hogan doing? He, he was a bouncer. Yeah. I believe. And then uh, Terry Funk, at least. I know because Hogan always told this story about how Terry said to him he he had a great look for for, for pro wrestling. And th- this was in this was in Tampa, I believe. This is like early this is early eighties. Um I, I I don't know any more details than that, but I believe we can, you know, we can credit Terry Funk with one of the driving factors as to why we had Hulk Hogan at all. So. Um, uh, he competed for uh, WCW from nineteen uh, eighty nine to nineteen ninety. Um, a notable feud with Rick. Flair in a I Quit match at Class of the Champions uh, 9, I believe. Um, forever. Huh? forever! 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 That, that, that clip that became, uh, I don't want to say a meme, but that clip became infamous. It's also the clip uh, a, a great admirer, Colt Cabana, uses every time uh, he finishes a Twitch stream. And he says, oh, anybody watching is, unfortunately, they can't leave because they're stuck forever, forever. And it goes into it and it fades out. Um, the, I think wrestling has always been very meme before memes were a thing. Oh, yeah. And a lot, we've gotten a lot of crazy, interesting, weird, and somewhat inappropriate memes from Terry Funk, no? (laughs) Oh, God. Um, I almost didn't make this uh, this recording because my horse was sick. Scoot him. God. (laughs) <laughs> but um, and then somehow Terry Funk finds himself back in WCW around ninety four or ninety five when uh when Dustin Rhodes starts feuding with Arn Anderson and and Dusty gets involved and Terry Funk comes back saying he wants to you know if he can't. He can't beat on the son of a carpenter. He'll beat on the son of a son of a carpenter. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, Funk would be involved in the '94 War Games at Fallboro. You know, and then uh, after somewhat after that, he in 1994, 1995, International Wrestling Association of Japan, um, which I believe is um, his MLW days. I'm getting that right, right? Um, uh, oh. I mean, what what would you mean by MLW days? Um, um, uh, not a Shido. What is his name? Uh, the ball ball uh, guy. Uh, the, that uh, guy. At, at Sushi Anita. Anita, thank you, Anita. Yeah. Um. FM, uh, yeah. FMW, um. Yes. FMW. Yes. What um with was kind of a turning point in his career where he went from um you know wrestling style to the violent hardcore style and i mean personally that's the terry funk i kind of grew up with was you know hardcore middle yep. east and crazy um well exploding bar wire matches with mick foley Obviously, the exploding barbed wire death match with Anita that is still to this day talked about. 
I mean, if you've seen the uh, the FMW uh, episode of Dark Side of the Ring, uh, you see a ton of clips uh, from those matches. There, there's hardly a match that has that had barbed wire in it that didn't have Terry Funk. If there was barbed wire, Terry Funk was there most of the time. Um, and that and was at a time where things like that was, you know, taboo. You didn't do that, those type of things in pro wrestling. And but, but considering yeah. what a name Terry Funk was at this time, to see him do it, and use barbed wire and, you know, the glass and the dumb tacks and the fire. It somewhat legitimized it, no? It, I would absolutely agree, uh, because at the same time, Eastern Championship Wrestling is becoming Extreme Championship Wrestling, and not a lot of people actually know this, but Terry Funk promised to make to promise to turn Eastern Championship Wrestling into Extreme Championship Wrestling by bringing that Japanese deathmatch style over here. Right. So again, Terry Funk responsible for another landmark in professional wrestling. Yeah, and from 93 to 97, um, he was very much a part of um, ECW. And he was, he headlined their first paid preview, Barely Legal, where he won the championship from uh, Raven, I believe. Um, you know, and that was a landmark on its own, just considering how much effort it took to get that paid preview to get that pay preview produced on pay preview. So, and I mean, he was obviously the, the strong, a leading force and the well known, respected name of ECW that legitimized it as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, without a doubt. You know, Harry Funk had a ton of matches. In, in ECW, but the one I remember the most is against Bret Hart. WrestleFest 90, 1997. Was that Terry his Fox retirement match? His uh, first <laughs> of many, I believe. Um, retirement match number one. With an asterisk. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. This is considered Bret Hart's only ECW match. Um, and it just... It was the shock of... You know, watching ECW at 2 in the morning. And all of a sudden seeing an ad for... You know, a, a match between Bret Hart and Terry Funk, and I'm like, wait, did I take acid and nobody tell me? <laughs> I mean, because around, you know, this time, he's starting to get back, uh, you know, into, uh, WWE? You know, WWE, and, you know, where the on his head? Most notably as Chainsaw Charlie, one of the teams with Cactus Jack. Um, and the very interesting, the very memorable feud with the New Age Outlaws um, that culminated to a um, dumpster. dumpster match at WrestleMania 14, right? Yeah, 14. Uh, yeah, WrestleMania 14. I remember the... the the almost blurring of the line of kayfabe when the outlaws on on 
a couple of Raws prior put Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie in the dumpster and pushed it off the, the Titan Tron stage. Oh, yeah. And the show literally stopped. I mean, you, you and you had you had everybody out there. You had you had Sonny crying. That's how, that's how much like it's. Oh God, we, 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 there's so much to Terry Funk. I mean, we could we could we could probably at least get 24 hours of just talking about him. Oh yeah, and then we get into his wrestling. <laughs> You're not wrong about that. Um, he also teamed with uh, Flash Funk. Uh, they said that it was his cousin in Tayfay. Um, obviously, uh, Flash Funk would be uh, too cold Scorpio. Yes. And then there um, was another match with Bret Hart. This time on Shotgun Saturday Night. You know which one I'm referring to, uh, right, Scooter? Uh, God, is that the one with the flying nuns? The one where he told Vince McMahon that he's a Yankee bastard and Bret Hart's mother is a whore? Huh? Hey, you could have told him he was a Jet bastard. <laughs> or, I, I mean, Met bastard. Or Jets, Mets. Same difference at this point. Um, Middle Return to Extreme Championship Wrestling in, uh, from 98 to 99. Um, <laughs> a small stint in WCW from 2000 to 2001. As part of the as part of the old age outlaws in what seemed to be a never ending feud with Norman Smiley, uh, and th there was even there was even another match with Bret Hart. Uh, there, uh, it was a hardcore rules match that time. Um, a match against Kevin Nash. Uh, hell, they even tried doing a. Another funk flair feud, and that kind of fizzled down, but it was still fun. To, it was <laughs> still fun. It was 2000 2001. They were grasping at stores at this point. Yep. Fun, yep. Uh, fun fact was um, he worked for uh, TNA in 2004. Um, him and Sandman uh, lost to CM Punk and Julio De Niro. Julio, Julio De Niro. Julio De Niro. Um, <laughs> In February of 2004, there was a fun fact for everybody. Oh, you no, know, I remember I went to a 98 house show uh, at the at the Coliseum, at National Coliseum, and this was before before the acolytes, and you know, and before you know, they had, it was Two Cold Scorpio and Farouk against Terry Funk and Bradshaw. They were all they were always swapping these four out. In the teams, um, and we know which ones work. Um, then, um, everybody knows that on um, the 2006 One Night Stand Kid preview, um, he once again reunited with Cactus Jack to wrestle. Actually, no, no, my bad. No, he teamed other way around. Dream or to take on good. Edge and McFoley. Yes. There you go, my bad. Um, and, you know, he's at what? He's like in his 50s at this point? And he, at the ending of the match, was him going through a barbed wire table. Would they uh, he would, he would have, he would have been just in his early 60s. Oh my god. Remember, 1944, this is 2006. And, uh, like I said, he was wrapped in barbed wire that they literally had to cut off him. Um, so, you know, he's not exactly phoning, phoning it in here or, you know, using his name to get by. He was doing really harsh shit in his early 60s. I think that was his last match in WWE as well. Yes, yes, I would, I would, uh, I, I believe so. Um, and, um, 
his last, um, his very last WWE appearance would be March 21st, 2016, uh, right before WrestleMania, uh, 32. Who, giving Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, the gift of the chainsaw. Yeah. I still remember that promo very well. It was really good on his part, Terry Funk. I mean, if I had a son, I'd like him to be just like you. And if I had a daughter... <laughs> and then I just wouldn't think of his movies. Yeah, he was in a uh, roadhouse with Patrick Swayze as a bouncer. Yep, over uh, the Carlos. top. Huh? Over the top with Sylvester Stallone as a bouncer. Uh, uh, Johnny Knox was the ringer as a thug. Uh, was, uh, yeah, those movies are there. He was also a part of the Beyond the Mat documentary that I believe that they documented his first um, his first retirement. Uh, yeah, it was about his knee. Is uh, first it was recommended he got he would get a knee replacement, and that surgery wouldn't happen for like a number of years later on. <laughs> I believe his official last match was for Big Time Wrestling. Um, he teamed with the Rock and Roll Express, uh, and they defeated Doug Gilbert, Jerry Lawler, and Brian Christopher. That's a little heartbreaking, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Good God! You can't. Oh. And we're being joined by a Kiko. Yeah, did you hear him come in? No, I yeah, he didn't even turn on. He <laughs> didn't hear me at all. Just hey, it's okay. You know what? Because I didn't want to interrupt. See, I'm so used to like coming in and interrupting. So, well, I think this is a good part. Uh, place to pause. Uh, Coleco, can you tell us about your memories of Terry Funk? Because obviously, you know, he was a big part of the territories that you love so much. Oh, yeah. Shit, man. Him and Jerry Lawler were tearing down the house. Funk and Flair. Funk, Flair, Funk, Lawler. Like, Funk, Von Erichs. Like, he was just there. Like, he was the guy. And it was just Monday nights, Memphis Coliseum, Mid South Coliseum, torn every bit of the Mid South was just like, man, that dude is a legend in the South. Like, he's easily in the South top. It's like Lutez and then Terry Funk, and maybe Rick Flair. <laughs> <laughs> because Terry Funk was just like a no nonsense southern dude and it just fed into like all of the the stereotypes of that time like especially in the 70s the 80s hell even into the 90s so he he fit in very well he had great matches with a Bill Dundee Jerry L I could go on and on man it was just like that dude was just just a one of a kind guy. He lived the hell of a life. I will say that. That dude retired, I felt like, 50, 11 times. <laughs> and, and every time he would say it's it, he'd just come right on back. But I, I, it just showed you how much he loved wrestling, man. It was just. It was very much his life. Yeah. We all thought that he was. Uh, he want, that he wanted to, you know, go out do what he loved most, and actually, for for, most, for and for, forgive me for being a little crass, but that he wanted to die in the ring. Because yeah, if he had it his way, if he had it his way, he probably would have died in the ring. I'm uh, I'm curious, had either of you had the opportunity to meet Terry Funk? 
Um, I've oh. had I've had stories told to me about him uh, by Mikey Woodbreck and Tom Dreamer. Okay. I uh, unfortunately have never had the actual pleasure of meeting uh, meeting Terry in person. Coleco. I think the closest I got to Terry Funk was WrestleMania 32, 2016. Uh, it was right across from Dallas Stadium. They were having like these uh, the the pre WrestleMania parties, and Funk just happened to be one of the cats there. So it was like a brief interaction, but nothing to the point where I could like get a story. Because most of the time when they're there, you know, he's popping in just to like, okay, we're popping in, and he, I, we didn't know he was going to be on the show. So the, the 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 timing there was a little brief, but I I have to ask, did you offer to buy him a Capri Sun? No, that was Alicia Fox. I know, I know. And you know what? She's gonna be in Cali, so I, I might have to. You know, I'm gonna bring a whole case of Capri Sun for <laughs> for Alicia. Fox. I did get, I did get the opportunity to meet him, shake his hand. Um, as we speak, I'm looking at a signed eight by ten that's on my wall of Cherry Funk that I got personally. Um. I do have the picture. I, do have, I would have to look for it, but um, you know, get meet these people. You know, before it's too late. Get give them their flowers, and you know, appreciate that time because they are legends. Um, yep. And I, uh, the uh, the insane clown posse were uh. Some of, the, one of the, some of the biggest fans, uh, all that work with JCW, um, oh my god, come across a match from IWA Mid-South, Mid-South, A Merry Funkin' Christmas, Danny Daniels, Ian Rotten, and Terry Funk, on the other side, Steve Film, Chris Candido, and DJ with her, but we don't make a big video anymore, so. He was also close friends with an NFL player named John uh, Iles, and yes. he was also very close friends with Sylvester Stallone as well. Um, so, that's pretty cool. Um, How do you think it got the gig in Over the Top? <laughs> and if you've seen Over the Top, it is like... The cheesiest arm wrestling movie ever, but it just made for some odd reason it made so much sense. He, he also choreographed the end fight of Rocky Five. It's incredible. Um, yeah, that is pretty impressive. It's like between him and uh, Tommy Morrison. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, it was. Oh, God, I forget. I forget what they they called it. It was Tommy Gunn in the movie. Tommy Gunn, but his real name Tommy Morrison. Yeah, they, they always give them such stupid names. <laughs> like Mason the Long Dixon. Come on, Tommy. Tommy good. Tommy good. I can I can see him there. Terry and Derek Funk were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in uh, two thousand nine. Um, so, you know, when we say, oh, these guys need to be in the Hall of Fame, he's already in the WWE Hall of Fame. He's in the Hardcore Hall of Fame, class of 2005, in the International Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame, um, in 2021. Um, so, you know, this guy has his, had his flowers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he also, he also released an album. Wait, like a country album? Uh, it was called Great Texan, 1984. Uh, soft rock meets uh, country. Uh, and it's considered to be a cult classic by fans. Uh, and Harry Fogg, in his never-ending 
list of first the, the first to do something. He is the only wrestler to have released an autobiography in comic book form. <laughs> The guy lived on his own trumps, didn't he? <laughs> oh. oh, man, beyond a shadow of a doubt, like, like just a white tee jeans and a fucking bandana with with his fist wrapped and it was just like, let's go. Um, just Terry don't make Funk, him do a moonsault. Terry Funk was married to his wife, uh, his wife, uh, Vicky Ann, um, on August twice. 14th, huh? Twice, matter twice. Um, in 1965. And he was married to her until they, um, until her death in 2019. Yeah, can, can uh, but, they, but they did divorce uh, at one point. I mean... They, they, yeah, but they, obviously they came back together. <laughs> yeah, but not until like an, like quite a number of years later, uh, from two thousand one uh, on hmm. until um, her death. But he he absolutely he absolutely loved her. That's absolutely for sure. Terry Funk was not a. Uh, not a man. Not a man who, who uh, you yeah, know, went went around chasing the ring rats. Right, and you know, considering what a tough life the wrestling is, to say that you know you were married twice and at least to the same woman, that's an incredible feat in the town. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, no. And uh, I believe somebody said about um, Terry that you know his wife would pack his all his uh, extreme weapons in the back of the car. Don't for, don't forget your branding on, honey. So there was definitely love there. Um, he does have uh, two daughters, Stacy and Brandy. Um, so yeah. And he died, like I said, on Thursday, um, August twenty third. He was seventy nine years old. What? Uh, twenty third was a Wednesday. Huh? Twenty third was a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah, it was a Wednesday. Wednesday, my bad. You know, as much as it sucks to lose a legend, we're just, you know, scraping the surface of some of his accolades that he's done. And, you know, if we really did a deep dive, we could see, you know, how much more important to pro wrestling he really was. And what a staple yeah. and shaping pro wrestling in the way that it is today. Because of him. Yeah. Oh. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of Terry Funk Invitational in the works. There has to be. I would love to see that. Um, and like I said, as much as it sucks to lose such a legend, you can't deny that he lived a full life doing exactly what he wanted to do on his own terms. No? True. I mean, that's the the crux of as as much as we don't like it, but at least he got the opportunity to put it all on the on the wood, as they say in the South. So, yeah. Any last words, uh, Scoodle? Scoodle. I said it once, I'll say it again. His legacy will run forever! 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 
<laughs> yeah, I remember that. And of course, I got some tours with out to the Funky family, um, like Zoe Funk. Um, Zoe Funk, um, one top model funk girl. Rest in power, my friend. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.